Hello everybody, Leia here. I know it's been a hot minute, and as always, when I disappear for a hot minute, I like to talk about it. So, here we go. Where have I been? And uh, the answer to that question is very simple. I have been moving. Uh, well, I suppose that explains about two or three weeks of my absence. Okay, so I just checked and it's been about two months since I posted. So I last posted on June 26th, and that was when I posted about having thrown out my bag. And then I'll say for the next two and a half weeks, I was pretty laid up, pretty miserable. Well, I guess it was two and a half weeks from when I threw out my back, because I threw out my back on June 20th, or like right in there. Yeah, it would have been June 20th because it was on my nephew's birthday. And then I was at work, and I had lifting restrictions, so I couldn't work in person. What had my restrictions lifted on the day that I was to move to Topeka, which, don't worry, I was just bringing, like, clothes and dishes and stuff because I live in a furnished apartment. The furniture in this apartment is not mine. I did not pick it out. Uh, but... Then I was still having, I think, maybe some pain, but I started dealing with a little bit of depression after having moved. I felt stressed out because I realized that this was, again, another move, and it was stressful, and I was eating, and my blood sugar... I don't even remember really what was going on with my blood sugar. I know that my stomach problems got exponentially worse around the 26th of July. Um, so basically what happened was that in like mid-July, so I want to say like July 17th, I was in the emergency room because if you don't know I have a recurring infection uh, in my mouth. It's a long story as to why, but it elevates my blood sugars. So then I had to go to the emergency room because I went to get an antibiotic and then instead of giving me an antibiotic, they sent me to the ER and then the ER gave me an antibiotic. Uh, they didn't admit me. They didn't even give me fluids. They were just like, here is your antibiotic. So that was fun. And then let's see what happened next. Okay. The next thing that happened was that I started having, I think, maybe some mild stomach problems around that time. Not related to the antibiotic. It's complicated how I know that. But um, I started dry heaving and having to go sit in the bathroom at work and dry heaving because I didn't want to throw up all over my desk because that would have been bad. So I was going, and I think that this would happen like almost every day, and it would be for like a couple of hours. So what ended up happening was that I went, uh, first I went to a work event that was in my town, and I remember getting this really big coffee, and it made me nauseous, and I thought, oh, this is because it has milk in it. I, don't, I think that this was before, yeah, this must have been before the day where I threw up. So, I started feeling sick. I think I ended up, I did, I can't remember if I ended up finishing the coffee or if I ended up throwing it away. You know, if that happened today, I would just throw it away. But I think at that time I was trying not to waste food. And this was the first time that I had had stomach problems when I was in the moderately high diabetic range. So like for me, moderately high, I consider like living in the 200s and low 300s. Uh, I had been sick when I was in the normal range for my diabetes. Most of my sickness was when I was in the normal range. And of course, whenever I got really sick and things started to get scary with my blood sugar, then I would get sick, but that's a symptom of DKA. So I was you know, very confused because I was like, okay, normally my blood sugar is not this high, 
why is it acting like this? Uh, but so I felt kind of sick, but I pulled myself together because I had already, you know, I got out of one work trip. And when I say got out of, I don't mean like I intentionally didn't go. I mean like I was excused from that work trip. I was excused from a work trip because of my back. And then I was excused from a work trip um, because of being in the emergency room. And so I was not trying to get excused from a work trip because my stomach hurt. Because I, at this point, I was not super open with my boss about how bad my stomach problems were. Really, I've been having a hard time being open about my disabilities in general at work. And I will make a video about that if you want. That has nothing to do with my bosses and everything to do with me. So I will talk about that at some point. But, so we went and we drove about two hours south of where I live now for this work event and I we ended up ordering lunch from a local restaurant because the town we were in has a population of like actually I'm gonna look it up because I don't want to slander this town I think that it's I think let me see if I'm right Oh, this town is actually much bigger than I thought. So this is a town of about 8,500 people. Way, way bigger than I thought. But anyway, it was decided that we were going to order lunch from the local restaurant that was kind of near where our event was. So I ordered some chicken tenders with lemon pepper sauce because I love lemon pepper almost as much as I love um, garlic parm. And... I ate it and then all of a sudden I had that very familiar feeling of needing to go dry heave. I didn't think I was going to throw up and I didn't, uh, but I didn't. I was sitting in a room full of literal nurses and I thought sitting at the table dry heaving, uh, number one, not very professional, number two, it's going to freak out a lot of the nurses. So I went to the bathroom. And I sat in the bathroom dry heaving, praying that I didn't actually throw up, which, uh, funnily enough, did make the nurses that I was with worried about me because I disappeared for more than half an hour, probably close to 45 minutes, I think. And, uh, only made them not worried when I came, another one of the nurses I was with came into the bathroom and I had just kind of decided, okay, I think I'm good, I think I'm not going to be sick. Uh, so that happened the next day I worked from home Monday I worked from home and I can't remember if I threw up on one of those days but I do remember that I went and I bought a whole bunch of food like did my weekly grocery shopping and so on Tuesday morning I sat down and I was going to have some iced coffee and a so this isn't what's in here now, but a sparkling water, one of these things, and some pizza rolls. I know that that's not a good breakfast, but uh, that's what I had at the moment. And I ate it, and then I started feeling the need to dry heave again, but it felt like I needed to dry heave and not throw up. And so I threw up. All over myself, all over my hair, my clothes. Uh, thankfully, I didn't get it on the floor, but... It was bad. And so I got out my phone. I texted my boss. I'm sick. I can still work, but I need to take a shower. And I need to wash my clothes because they have sick on them. So she's like, yes, fine, do that. Work from home. And then I started having... So this was like the end of uh, July. And I started having some pretty pretty not good stomach symptoms. I think that I probably had been having stomach symptoms for a couple of weeks at that point they had been back. Um, yeah, probably, uh, they had probably been back. They had probably started the week before, I think. But I knew that this was the stomach problems that I had been dealing with that were coming back, that I was in a flare. And it just so happened to be that the same time that I went into this flare, I also had a doctor appointment with a new GI. It was not meant to be a, like, symptom, like, oh my goodness, I'm having symptoms, I need to be seen appointment. It was intended to be a, 
let's get established because I have GERD and I need somebody to prescribe my GERD medicine. So I went in feeling really sick and I described everything to her and she said, I think you do have gastroparesis. And to me, this was like, woman, do you not understand the journey that we have been on for, you know, the entire time that my channel has existed for these, what, almost four years now? You know, speaking of which, I probably am going to do something to celebrate my four-year anniversary, or however they say it, but, uh... Well, because we've been over this for four years, but she's like, I know that you had a normal scan, that it was right down the middle, that there was nothing to indicate that you had gastroparesis in that scan, but you are diabetic. All of your symptoms line up with gastroparesis. The fact that they found food in your stomach and a scope proves gastroparesis more than one normal emptying test. And so I left with a new with a renewed prescription for my uh, antacid medicine, a new prescription and actual instructions for um, my uh for a medicine that's an acid blocker, which is actually also an H2, and along with a new medicine for gastroparesis. And if you don't know, I'm just going to say this, there are only three medicines that treat gastroparesis, two are approved in the U.S. The one that's not approved in the U.S. is Domperidone. I had an opportunity to be in it, well I was initially discussed as far as being in a Domperidone study. But my weight was too much, so I was not invited into that study, which is okay because I didn't want to be in the study anyway. Um, after the Dom Peridone is Reglan, and if you don't know, I did take Reglan in 2023. And on the one hand, it worked wonders, it made me hungry, it made my stomach feel so much better. But I'm also on another medication that impacts that same, um, it impacts the same chemical but in a different way and so there is a black box uh, warning not to take them together and while I initially was like please just give me something, I told the doctor that I did not want to be on Reglan and she said that's okay I don't think that you should be on Reglan anyway. And so now the third medicine that um, they use, the final medicine that they use, is erythromycin. So you may have been on an antibiotic recently called erythromycin. And erythromycin is different than erythromycin. And erythromycin is something that they don't really use anymore because it's an older antibiotic. It's not as good as newer ones such as erythromycin. Uh, but erythromycin also has the effect of improving stomach emptying time. And so here I was on these cocktails of medicine and I am doing better. I still have some of the general unwellness feeling and I definitely have gone back on my soup and crackers diet. Uh, to the point where someone was like, oh, you're cooking something, I hope it tastes good because of how many cartons of broth I had. And I wanted to be like, no, this is what I eat because I have gastroparesis. But I didn't, I didn't say that, I just wanted to. But yeah, it's, it's going good. I've kind of been alternating between like, you know, trying to have one regular meal one soup meal and one broth meal a day. Uh, but sometimes I'll cut out the soup meal and just have two broth meals and a regular meal. And that actually seems to be going really well. Uh, I still get full easy and there's still some burping, but the nausea is like basically gone. Um, and certainly there's been no vomiting since I've started on the new medicines. 
which is just like, <sighs> finally my stomach is uh, doing better. I still, I think that it it's going to be a while, if ever, that I get back. Oh, and yeah, I think it's going to be a while, if ever, until I get back to doing three solid meals a day like I was doing before. And I'm definitely working towards doing smaller meals more often. Um, if you don't know, one of the difficult things for me with um, fueling my body is not just that I'm diabetic. It's not just that I have gastroparesis and pretty severe GERD because of the gastroparesis. But it's also that I have problems with drinking milk. This is a normal problem for those with acid reflux that ensure and the like make acid reflux worse. I am considering ordering um, Ensure plant protein on Amazon and trying those. Uh, another problem that I guess I almost forgot to mention is that also I have a soy problem. Uh, don't know why, but whenever I eat soy, my thyroid tanks. There is no research proving that this is true, but someone mentioned it to me, and I've done many trials where I go back to eating my soy protein bars and my thyroid dips. So I can't prove that it is that. I can't provide you with scientific literature that proves this happens, but... It happens to me, and don't take that as it will happen to you. Take it as Leia's body is weird and does weird things. And so Leia's diet is restricted if she wants to do better. So what am I doing now, you may ask? And the answer is trying to eat six small meals a day. Well, kind of three that are kind of meals and three that are snacks a day. My insulin, oh, and I should say this, I recently saw a new endocrinologist. So now I have three of the four doctors on my team established. Uh, just need a psychiatrist now. But the endocrinologist basically said that it's possible because for Northwestern, I don't know if you guys have ever seen those, like, tiny, um, egg, those tiny muffin tins that are, like, this big. When I lived in Chicago, they would, um, poach our eggs in them. And basically, they give you that much food at, um, the gastric eating study at Northwestern. And what my endocrinologist said is that it's possible that when I eat a tiny meal like that, that my stomach handles it fine, but when I eat a large meal, that my stomach doesn't know what to do. And that that's when I have delayed emptying. Which actually lines up because uh, a couple of times this past, over the last couple of weeks, I've done a day where I do, like the two broth, the mostly broth days where I eat broth up until like four and then I have like a proper meal and my stomach feels great. Uh, a couple times I tried to do those spaced out where I did broth every hour and a half, broth with crackers every hour and a half, and that emptied fine. I was super hungry afterwards. Uh, not super hungry right afterwards, but like, you could tell that it was going through my stomach at the correct pace. That I, what, my stomach was emptying and I was getting hungry again every two hours, which is what you would expect from what, what I was eating. Uh, so for me, it's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go forward with the six meals a day. My endocrinologist made some adjustments to my insulin that are allowing me to eat six meals a day while still keeping my sugar where it should be. Uh, and I really like this endocrinologist because he was able to look back and be like, look, you had a normal A1C for a diabetic, that is. You had a normal diabetic A1C in June. You had a horrible diabetic A1C this month, but you moved and you've been going through problems. So obviously the stress of moving didn't do very good on your body and you know what to do. So I'm not going to, and that's one thing that I like, the, the, the closest way to my heart for certain doctors, not for nutritionists, but for 
like, um, an endocrinologist is to, like, respect that I understand diabetes and that I can do what I'm supposed to do. It's just when I get super stressed, things happen. So that's kind of where I am at right now. I'm glad that I could catch you up on all this stuff. I'm probably going to be making a Danny video, uh, maybe later today even. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing. The part, a big part of why I haven't been filming throughout all of this, other than just hectic, sick, in pain, all of the problems, is that I didn't have a good filming setup. Uh, the way my apartment is, the only place I can really film is my bed. Which, if you, in Kansas, I was filming, uh, at my desk, and in, um, in Chicago, I was filming at my desk. But I can really only film on my bed because of the outlet, the only outlet being over here, and I need my ring light, and I was having a hard time figuring out how to do the ring light and the tripod and have it close enough to be able to plug in. But I got this new uh, tripod that I really like. That is like a ring pod, tripod, all in one. The thing is like seven feet tall. Like it's perfect. It's great, guys. So yeah, I hope you enjoy that this video. I will keep you up to date. Uh, and also let me know, do you want me to like do a what I eat video? Because, you know, I've gone back and forth on them. Uh, there's some great... Mary Riz Halley did a great video about how what I eat in the days can become really problematic, but just kind of showing you of like, yeah, being diabetic and with gastroparesis kind of sucks. So, alright, well you guys let me know what you want to see. Have a great day and I'll talk to you next time!